genetic inheritance, which is derived from the Mendelian genetics, uh, is what we call as the sex link genes. Okay, for the sex link genes here, it is the gene which is located on either of the sex chromosome. Right. So this is according to the Campbell, and most of the sex link genes they are on the X chromosome and show the distinctive pattern of the inheritance all right so it is the gene which carried on the sex chromosome and in mammals almost all of sex linked genes are located on the x chromosome or in other words uh, we can call them as the x link all right so there are two genetic conditions that we can give the example for the sex linked genes here which are the hemophilia and also the colorblind Okay, when we talk about these sex link genes, right, we will be comparing between the males and also the females, right? For the human females, they have two X chromosomes, two Xs here, which means that they have two sex link alleles, right? And for the human f uh, males, they have only one X chromosome and the other one would be the Y chromosome, okay, the XY, which means that they have only one sex link allele. Alright, so in other words that these males, they are heterogametic, okay, they have the XY chromosome on their sex chromosome, alright, and for the females, this is what we call as the homogametic, because they have both of the X chromosome uh, being the X's, right, so X and X here. Right, so this is the this is why males suffer from the effects of the sex link genetic diseases more often compared to the females because they only have one X chromosome which can be easily affected. Okay, and there are no known Y link traits probably because the Y chromosome they carries so few genes. Okay, now moving on to the link genes or the gene linkage. Okay, for the link genes here. Uh, it is referring to two or more genes which are located on the same chromosome. All right, so these genes, they are located close enough together on a chromosome that they tend to be inherited together. All right, so when they are inherited together, they will not obeying the Mendelian's law, right? Because they will not undergo the independent assortment. Right, so the tendency for a group of genes located on the same chromosome to be inherited together in the successive generation. So this is according to Solomon. Okay, for the definition of the link genes. Okay, for the link genes here. Okay, since they are the genes that are on the same chromosome. Okay, they are linked together. All right, so such genes they do not obey the Mendelian law because they do not undergo the independent assortment. Thus, they are inherited together unless uh, they are separated by crossing over during prophase 1 of the meiosis, right? So, if we see in this table, okay, we are comparing between the dihybrid and also the link genes here, okay? So, the genotype for this one is the heterozygote, right? And after the process of meiosis, okay, the gametes that uh, the dihybrid pro they are producing, there are four types of gametes here. Right, so we have the big A and big B, uh, big A and small B, small A and big B, and small A and small B. Right, so there are four types of the gametes produced okay, from the mice due to the results of the independent assortment. All right, different cases for the link genes here, okay, because they are linked together. All right. So when they are linked together, okay, meaning that they will not obey the Mendelian's law, all right? They will not undergo the process of independent assortment, all right? So if they are not undergoing the process of independent assortment, okay, you can see from here the gametes that they are producing instead of four different types of gamete, they only produce two types of gamete here, all right? So you can see here these two two uh, offspring, okay? They have similar uh, gametes here, right? They have the big A and big B, big A and big B, right? So that is one type. So another type of the gametes they are produced from the link genes here is the small A and small B, right? So this is the results of uh, the gametes which do not undergo the process of the independent assortment, right? So that is the case for the link genes. Okay, so for the link genes with crossing over, 
okay if you refer to this table okay when we do the test cross for the f1 okay the first generation they are being crossed with the homozygous recessive okay the phenotypic ratio will not be one 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 okay in comparison to the Mendelian uh, dihybrid inheritance okay for the link genes here okay the phenotypic ratio will not be one 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 okay but for the genotypic ratio it will stay as one 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 ratio okay and for the last part of this uh, genetic inheritance chapter number four would be the genetic mapping all right okay for this genetic mapping the first thing that you need to do that you should be able to do is to define what does it mean by the genetic mapping okay and the second one is to the identify the position or the order of the genes along the chromosome based on the recombinant data okay for the genetic mapping it is the ordered list of genetic loci along a chromosome all right so it is determined by the percentage of recombination Okay, or the recombination frequencies, which we call as the linkage map. All right, so this is according to Campbell, right? And the percentage of recombination they can be obtained by calculating what we call as the crossover value, or simplified as COV. For the COV or the crossover value formula, okay, what you can do is you take the total number of the recombinant. Okay, you take the total number of the recombinant and you divide them with the total number of the offspring okay and then don't forget to times them or you need to multiply them with the hundred all right so for the recombinant here it is referring to the offspring which have different phenotype from their parent okay meaning that they do not have the phenotype which is original from their parent so that is what we call as the recombinant offspring right so for the cov here what you need to do you divide the total number of recombinant divide them with the total number of offspring then you times them with 100 okay if the percentage of the recombination okay the value of the the c of a value here is large okay around 20 to 40 percent the genes are relatively far apart on the chromosome okay so since since they are far apart from one another there is high possibility for the crossing over to occur Okay, the process of the crossing over they have high possibility to to occur all right but if the percentage of the recombination the cov value is low around one to five percent okay the genes they are relatively close together on the chromosome according to their cov value all right so since they are very close together there is lesser possibility for the crossing over to occur Okay, and the distance between the genes on the particular chromosome is expressed in map units. Okay, so when you give the value of the COV, right, so you can uh, label them as the map units. Okay, and one map unit is equivalent to 1% of the percentage of recombination. Okay, and also today the word centimorgan is often used. Alright, so there are three different units that you can refer for the genetic mapping here. You can label them as the map unit. You can also give them in terms of the percentage or you can give in terms of the centimorgan unit. Okay, and in conclusion, through this genetic mapping, we can determine two things. Okay, the first one is relative distance between these two genes. And the second one is the linear sequence of the link genes on the chromosome. Alright, that's it from me. Thank you for listening.